Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Schlav, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today I've asked Valeria Kamphaus to share her personal insights and knowledge of the current Russian Ukraine crisis. Valeria came across the sea from Ukraine to the United States. She is an American of Ukrainian descent and a Russian. Ukrainian, Russian interpreter and translator. And she works as a court interpreter for the Hawaii State Judiciary. Valeria is proud to be a US citizen. And the insights she shares with us today are her personal opinions based on her own life experiences, having been born and growing up in Ukraine and her observations of the recent events based upon her own intimate background knowledge of Ukraine and Russia. Welcome, Valeria. It's, it's good to see you. How are you? Thank you, Mark. Thank you for a great introduction. Aloha to everybody. I'm doing good. How are you today? OK, I want to ask a, a couple background questions. Uh, you know, you are an American of Ukrainian descent, having been born and raised in Ukraine and eventually moving to the United States and becoming a US citizen and now living in Hawaii. Uh, briefly, why and how did you come to the United States and end up in Hawaii? Well, there is not nothing very remarkable in my story. Um, 16 years ago, uh, I met an American guy, fall in love, we married, we had kids together, we moved initially to Germany. We stayed for eight years in Germany until one day he came over. He said, I got a job offer, which is very hard to turn down. We are going to Hawaii. I said, okay. <laughs> so here I am eight years after um, having to start the life twice from scratch um, in a different world, learning the different way of living, enjoying it and appreciating it every day. Okay. Now Going back to your birthplace, Ukraine, and let's put up a map of Ukraine. Where and where were you born in the Ukraine, and, and where did you live in Ukraine? Well, I was born in eastern Ukraine, actually, the uh, uh, hot zone, I would say, today. I was born a little bit, like 20, 30 miles away from uh, um, uh, the occupied Russian occupied territories. Uh, I was born in Krasny Liman. My parents were both doctors. After they graduated medical school, we went up north. So uh, in the northern Ukraine, I spent the first 10 years of my life, I believe. I started my elementary school there. And then I moved uh, to the southern Ukraine, to Odessa. And I lived there for the next 20 years until I moved with my family to Germany. And I see on the map, you, Odessa is is down at the bottom towards the, the left of the screen a little bit of the, on that's the map. That's correct. Yes, okay. that's right on the Black Sea. It's one of the largest Black Sea port in the modern Ukraine. Okay. Now, I, I, want, I, I want to dive into these issues. And I know for, from talking with you uh, and exchanging correspondence, 30 minutes is not enough time to talk about everything. But... Uh, I want to talk about a few things that have appeared uh, that we've been hearing, and also I want your insights and your knowledge. Uh, I, I've heard the word hate used many times in the media to describe the relationship between Russia and Ukraine. I mean, why? I mean, is there, is, there, is there really something behind this apparent animosity? Do Ukrainians and, and the Russians hate each other? Well, hate is a very strong word, like we talked about this before, and I, um, I hope we're not there yet. I hope Ukrainians are not completely, um, irrevocably hating on Russia yet, but definitely what's happening now causes a lot of pain and animosity uh, between the two nations and uh, definitely does not help to build like help uh, friendship, rela friendly relationship um, or any type of brotherly relationship. Uh, 
and despite the fact that most Ukrainians would either have a family member, a relative, a friend on the other side of the border, or a partnership of business in any ways, um, the fact remains that the facts are so that Russia kills Ukrainian people, kills Ukrainian civilian, bombs residential quarters in Ukrainian cities, annexes territory, invades the territory, uh, violates the treaties and various international agreements. Um, so yes, naturally, they are not very uh, loved uh, among Ukrainians and in Ukraine. Yeah, so the, yeah, all right. So there, there is this history and this background. Now, I, I, wanna, I wanna now dive into the present. I wanna, and that may be hard based on our discussions, but what are the issues that have created the current Russia-Ukraine crisis in, in this winter of 2022? Well, um, it's hard to look at this winter 2022 um, as an independent, uh, like separate event. There is a chain of events that is taking us to the 19, uh, to the 2022. And that started at least eight years ago in 2014, when Russia invaded Ukraine, when Russia annexed Crimea, when Russia killed Ukrainian soldiers, um, when there were massive disinformation wars, cyber attacks, hybrid wars, a lot of propaganda um, that Russia has been generating through all these years. And uh, uh, 2022 is not a separate event. It is just another escalation and another level of conflict among the conflict and the wars that's been going for eight years. This is not this year's event. It's a long lasting war conflict um, that started from Russia and that has been brought to a worse and more and more uh, serious level, significant level with every year. So uh, the official pretext right now is that Russia is using is their concern about the NATO border coming closer to, um, to Russian border, which they allegedly say, consider as a threat kind of doesn't make sense to me regarding that geographically, this is good thousand some uh, miles from Moscow, when in reality, they have just another NATO state along the Baltic border, and that's two hours drive. So they have NATO literally two hours, three hours drive from, uh, from, from Moscow, but they are concerned about NATO coming closer on the southern end. It doesn't make sense. So, um, but yes, this is what they use officially as a pretext. They are feeling threatened. They are feeling that the ethnic Russians within the territory of Ukraine and Russian speaking people are being threatened. And this is the, the, the reason for their escalation on the border. Well, okay. So, and, and I hear what you're saying that this is not just 2022. And this is a, a longer uh, experience that has been going on uh, for eight years, and uh, the it, 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 2022 has just been coming up in the news now. Uh, yes. I mean, the 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 uh, gathering of troops. Now, now, when did I mean when did Russia start gathering troops at the Ukraine border? And and is, did that happen before 2022? Of course, they did. Almost every year, we heard those stories about the escalation in 2014, uh, 2015. There was actually uh, the, the, the regular Russian troops crossed the border of Ukraine in, East, in the east before. Um, the, and that's when the Minsk agreement was actually, that resulted in Minsk agreement that was happening in 2018. And it's happening now in 20, 20, 20, 2021, 2022. Yes, it's, I mean, they, they always been there. It's just the amount of quantity when they bring more, when they take some more away. And so it's always been happening for many years, and and but we hear about it now. Uh, it, it's 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 bigger in the news. It seems to be impending. And and why do you think, you know, based upon your your background, why do you think that Russia wants to invade Ukraine? I, I know you, I heard you talk about NATO and and that type of thing, but it, I mean that's it, it. It sounds like Russia wants to invade Ukraine. Why do you think? Russia wants to invade Ukraine? Well, uh, like I mentioned before, I'm not an expert and uh, it is hard for me to, uh, to see the global picture and the mass picture, but I strongly believe 
um, that, uh, and, and Putin many times, he mentioned that in his own words, he considered the collapse of the Soviet Union in the early 90s as the major geopolitical catastrophe of the modern time. So they have always claimed that um, the Soviet Union fall uh, was a big mistake. And they, um, in my opinion, are trying to recreate Ukraine, uh, the Soviet Union, um, commemorating it to, by the way, 100 year anniversary, which is falling onto this year. The Soviet Union was created in 1922, which was exactly 100 years away. And at that time, initially, that was Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, and Transcaucasia, which is the territory of the present day Georgia, Armenia, uh, Azerbaijan, um, the Caucasus, Caucasus Mountains region. So um, Putin is very symbolic. He likes all type of parades, commemorating immortal battalions and so on and so forth. So I see, I believe there is a lot of symbolism, you know, that it probably would happen this year. But like I said, that's my guess. Nobody really knows what Putin wants. I wish we knew. <laughs> well, and, and I hear what you're saying is that, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like what you're saying is that Putin would like to recreate uh, the Soviet Union and have a country that incorporates all these other countries again. Uh, and there, and and so, is that correct? Is that um, I believe so. Uh, yeah. Nobody the knows for a fact, but logically, I mean, that's what he's been hinting on and pointing out many times. I mean, they want the, the, they want the former powers, they want the former territories. Um, they always wanted it. They never, they never actually denied that. And the, and the hundred year anniversary is very interesting. Uh, it's sort of symbolic in a way. Yeah, isn't it? it is a coincidence, but it doesn't look good. I tell you, it doesn't make it, it doesn't bring any calmness to to realize the sad anniversary is coming this way. And and um, you, you talked about Ukraine being part of Russia at some point, and. And does Putin really believe? I mean, well, you can't. I know. I know you can't tell me. But is that is that your impression? Is that is that there is this feeling that Ukraine is part of Russia? Well, I mean, they say it out loud that Ukraine is not a country; it's a territory. That this is not a full. I mean, full scope nation. That this is one nation. Russians and Ukrainians and Belarus are one people. Uh, they keep saying that all the time. That's not a guess. They keep uh, stating it. And indeed, Ukraine and Russia have a lot, like over a thousand years of history. Um, that's not the point. And there was a certain time when uh, Ukraine uh, signed a particular treaty with the Russian Empire, um, looking for some kind of protection and an ally uh, against the Poland Lithuanian Commonwealth, which ended up in just another treaty broke and Ukraine forcibly joined a joint to the to the Russian Empire and becoming a portion and the people were persecuted and the language was forbidden and the schools were discriminated and so on and so forth. So this repeats in the history all the time. So through the timing, at least the last 400 years, yes, Ukraine was forced to be part of Russia and yet Ukraine was trying to free themselves and trying to keep their national identity and the language and the history and the culture. So it's not just happening in the last eight years that are in the last hundred years and so on and so forth. Okay, so that, that's a background that we don't usually hear about. Um, now, it, you, you mentioned a little bit about um, uh, what Putin was saying, or uh, I, that, I guess that's the Russian government. What are they telling? What is Putin or the Russian government telling their own uh, citizens about what's happening in the current crisis? Well, um, they've been saying a lot of ugly stories. There is a lot of horror stories that they are bringing to their television. There were stories about Ukrainian army crucifying kids in the Eastern Ukraine. There were, that just recently there were, uh, um, there were stories about uh, 
uh, Russian insurgents, pro-Russian uh, uh, insurgents in uh, eastern Ukraine finding the mass graves uh, uh, with thousands of people buried there, you know, allegedly ethnic Russians that were uh, killed by uh, Ukrainians. There is a lot of uh, conversation on Russian television about the fact that uh, Ukraine actually doesn't even live with the mind of their own. Um, they are being told what to do by the Americans, by the uh, by NATO, and, and this is the cause of hostility. They say Ukrainians wouldn't be so hostile to us if it were not the involvement of the West. So there is a lot of lies uh, that is going on. Um, in the recent days, there is a lot of uh, horror stories again about the fascism in Ukrainian in Ukrainian society. Um, I believe they are kind of heating the conflict up and preparing some kind of uh, um, uh, uh, information information uh, um, uh, influence on the population, but. Uh, Yes, like I said, I mean, I lived in that country for 20 years, for 30 years. I, I frequently go and visit. My family lives there. Uh, they are not true. It, it is not true. They lie. Oh, okay. Russia is attempting to vilify Ukraine and the right. Ukrainians. Uh, do you have any uh, any uh, understanding what, I mean, do, do the Russian people believe this and do they really want to? Uh, invade Ukraine, or is this just Putin? Can you do you have a do you have an opinion on that? I, I know it's hard to to know all the facts, but well, um, I do not know the first hand knowledge of what Russian people think because I cut a lot of contacts with Russians uh, in regards to the conflict. Um, I want to believe that no uh, sane human being would be willing to go to war or would be willing to live in the war zone. This is simply unnatural. I can't believe there is a, there is a san, sane, healthy human being that would want to go to war. Though I understand that when you have, uh, uh, there, and I've, I've been there, I grew up in the Soviet Union. We only heard the one, heart of, one side of story and we didn't, and we had limited access to the, to the sources outside. So it is very easy to believe a lie when this is the only alleged truth that you receive and this is the only source of information you get or it's the only source of information in your language and you just don't speak any other. Okay, and it, and it sounds like Putin has a goal. He has a, a propaganda and he, uh, I, I doubt if people are gonna vocally disagree with him. Uh, that, that's I, on, right. I want to believe in the good and the people in general, but so far I've seen a report of one human being, one female in Russia, in a one-person protest against the war. Okay. You don't hear the news from Russia that the population, the nation, is uh, 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 coming in the streets protesting actively uh, advocating against the war with Ukraine. Okay. And that's a fact. All right. Now, let's, you, you talked about you still have a lot of contacts in Ukraine. What, what do you I mean? What do the Ukrainians want? I mean, what, where, what is their position in all of this? We, we really, we really don't hear that. Well, it, it is, we actually do. We just don't pay attention. I think Ukrainians have uh, clearly expressed their intentions back in 2013. They clearly expressed that they want to be a European nation. They want to eventually be ready and join NATO because they want to live in peace and they understand they have a nasty neighbor. Um, they want to be a democratic society and they have done a tremendous uh, past tremendous work towards the democratic process uh, in the last 30 years of the country's existence. Um, they want to be able, they want to be an open nation with the open borders. Uh, they do appreciate the fact that they are welcome in Europe and they are very welcoming people by themselves. So I strongly encourage you, but when, when peace 
finally settles in that land, please go visit. I'm sure you will love it. It's a beautiful country. Okay. Now, uh, one, one thing we, we've heard about a lot of uh, leaders talking with Putin, but we, we really haven't heard about Zelensky, president of Ukraine, talking with Putin. Is there a, a relationship there? Is there a problem? Is there a, a, any respect between them? Or would there, is there a chance they could meet and work this out? Is that a, a realistic or is that an imaginary idea? Well, thank you for the question, by the way. My opinion, again, uh, not as an expert, right? That um, there is very little to talk about because um, first of all, these are two nations at war. Uh, second, because um, Zelensky simply doesn't have anything that Putin wants to offer. He cannot, want, he cannot offer, Putin wants Ukraine as a territory as a province of, of Russia, of the Russian empire. And this is not, and he doesn't want anything less than that. And Zelensky will not be able, no president will be able to offer that. The people will not let them do that. Um, so uh, on top of that, I believe uh, Putin is a type of the uh, leader, of the country leader, which understands two languages. It's the language of money and the language of power. So um, I do not see him having a serious intent to speak to the president of Ukraine unless he absolutely is, has to, he's forced to. And unfortunately, that only be achieved if the third parties like the U European Union, uh, United Nations, uh, uh, United States will get involved in this process. And that's the only times when it was happening before. Okay. Uh, what, you know, it, it, it doesn't sound like there's uh, an opportunity to talk and meet and work something out, but so what are the Ukrainians thinking about? What's the atmosphere based on your discussions with your friends and relatives in Ukraine? How, first of all, how will they respond and, and what, do you hear from your friends and relatives about that? Well, this is the toughest question probably of all you've asked me so far, uh, <laughs> because it's a very personal question. And I do have a lot of people I potentially can lose, which is the worst possible scenario I can see. Uh, none of them, um, my husband and I, we offered all of them a safe home in case they want to, to come. Um, none of them is intending to leave the country. They say, this is my home. And as long as Ukraine exists, this will be my home. This is where I'm going to live. Um, a lot of them are willing. I know a lot of my friends were actually uh, preparing to join or joining the territorial defense. Um, and a lot, of, a lot of my family is supporting the troops today. Um, in one way or the other, they've been doing that from day one. Um, they all at home, they all very calm. I tell you that there is much more panic here in the United States that I see than back in Ukraine. They have toilet paper and water and food supplies in the stores. They celebrate Valentine's Day today. Um, they sing songs yet, and they are trying to cheer each other up. But I do understand everybody's very stressed and very concerned. Um, mentally, they are prepared for the worst, and they do not plan on just surrender. Nobody, nobody's talking about surrendering. It's um, they are very, they are very brave and strong people. And it, it also sounds like they've been at war. I, I heard you use those words for several years. I mean, yes. we, we don't realize that maybe, but, but really what's been going on is they've been at war. And, uh, and so they're maybe uh, ha, are more used to what's going on and they're not, they're not surrendering, uh, right? And, and They are at war, you are absolutely right. They are at war. Um, they've been in war since 2014, when uh, Russia invaded and annexed Crimea, when Russia invaded the uh, 
uh, eastern uh, eastern part of Ukraine, the Donetsk area, um, it never ended. Okay. Now, you are now a U.S. citizen. That's correct. You, you, but you have a background in Ukraine. Uh, you know a lot about it. You have family there. Now, you're proud to be a U.S. citizen. I know you've told me that. But what, as a U.S. citizen of Ukrainian descent, should the U.S. do with respect to this crisis? What, why? Um, it is hard for me to say. I have very little background in the international politics and conflict resolution, unfortunately. But um, I understand Ukraine needs friends. Um, they need a lot of guidance. It's a very young democratic nation. Um, they, which is at war with a very big author, uh, authoritarian uh, country. Um, so it is natural that Ukraine needs the military support. Um, it is natural that Ukraine is incurring huge uh, financial losses right now. This is understandable. Economically, it is affecting Ukraine tremendously. So of course, uh, Ukraine will need financial uh, support and economic support. Um, I do believe you, what what um, but the United States of America is doing for Ukraine today is tremendous, is really big, and every every Ukrainian knows that. Every Ukrainian knows who is a friend and who is an enemy, with little exceptions, of course. Every every uh, every nation, every society has exceptions, right? Um, every rule has exceptions. But um, I really hope that uh, America will still be there will still be uh, an ally, a friend of the of Ukrainian people. Um, and I hope that Ukraine will remain independent, uh, free nation, which will remain American ally, ally, and that will remain like that for years. So you, you think America, you want America to continue to stand up for Ukraine and Ukraine is facing a totalitarian enemy uh, in set war. Yes. And I, you want that support. Yes, I wanted, I wanted to bring that up. I understand we're running out of time right now. But one crucial thing I wanted to say, especially considering, you know, what our politicians, the Hawaiian politician, um, the politician Tulsi Gabbard said the other day, you know, why do we have to get involved? Ukraine is not even a democracy. And uh, um, the, the, I mean, Putin has a real deal because uh, Carson said, Tucker Carson said the same thing. Putin has a reasonable concern there. It's his sphere of activity. We just need to give them what they want. No, this is a wrong approach to, I mean, this is, it is a very mi big misconception to think that even if Putin takes over Ukraine, he will settle down, get satisfied, say, okay, I got, I got everything I wanted, we're we good. No, this is far beyond Ukraine, and I'm glad the Americans understand that. This is far beyond just taking, grabbing that territory. The Soviet Union is coming back. Putin has done a lot to bring it back in the former might, in the former sphere, uh, territorial uh, 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 presence, and uh, he wants the power. He wants the former power, the, co the Cold War era, when he could, when he had to say, not just in Eurasia, not just in Europe, but all over the world. And he will be attempting to achieve it, whether through the uh, energy dependence, whether through financial dependence, whether through military presence, whether through nuclear power. Let there be no doubt. It's not just about Ukraine. So giving him that what he wants right now is kind of 1939 approach. Mm -hmm. So there's a greater there's a greater threat to the rest of the world and other countries from all of this. I have um, no doubt in that. In, in, in order to close this off, uh, are there any relevant, positive Ukrainian words that you can translate for us and share with us that might help us? I might need another hour for that, but still. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, like I said, Ukraine, Ukraine is great. Ukraine is an absolutely unique nation like nothing else probably in the world. And uh, right now, they have 
a lot of things changed in the last eight years for them. Um, there is a very special word that you might want to try and remember. Uh, Ukrainians, uh, besides saying hello today, uh, they really meet and greet you with Slava Ukraini. Slava Ukraini means glory to Ukraine, which is actually a, a Ukrainian, somewhat Ukrainian way uh, of aloha. It's not just a hello or goodbye or thank you. Um, it's a spirit. It's a spirit of resistance. It's a spirit of hope. It's a spirit of strength. It's the way of belonging. Slava Ukraini, glory to Ukraine. And you will always hear Yeroyam Slava. Glory to your heroes. We remember our heroes. We remember our history. Um, so this is, this is a, a way to say hello and at the same time tell Uk Ukrainian, I stand with you. I support you. I know what you're fighting for. Okay. Slavo Ukraina? Something Slava like that? Slavo Ukraini. Slavo Ukraini. It may take me a while to get that, but I'll, how about Aloha? Aloha. Heroyam Slava. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Uh, it was I, my utmost pleasure. Thank you, Mark, for having me today. Valeria, thank you for being uh, my guest today and sharing your your personal knowledge, your personal insights. Aloha.